Hello and welcome to Antebe in Uganda. Welcome to State House for an exclusive interview with the President of Uganda, Yoveri Museveni. Mr. President, thank you very much for welcoming us here. Thank you. You're most welcome. Mr. President, I want to begin with the situation in Guinea. Uh, just a few days ago, a coup overthrew the elected president, Alpha Conde. What is your reaction? Well, that's uh, unfortunate. It is uh, a step backwards. Uh, those military coups are of, of low value. We had them. In the 1960s, they were part of Africa's problems. So I, I condemned the, the coup. We don't accept the idea of coups. Those coups are not a solution. Should there be sanctions against the authors? Yes, they should, they should get out. They should be uh, told to go away because they are not uh, a solution to, to problems of the country. I want to uh, get uh, to Afghanistan in a way. Uh, the U.S. has asked, and you've accepted, to resettle temporarily some 2,000 uh, Afghans uh, here on Ugandan soil. The operation is ongoing. Why did you make that decision? It is human humanitarian. Those are human beings. Their country was messed up by so many actors and now they have nowhere to go. So uh, when we were asked for them to transit through here, we agreed, we welcomed it. It's a duty. But some are saying this might be a security uh, threat. What is your response? Can you give insurances that they are properly vetted? Because you don't know them, obviously. Uh, the, the Americans are handling them. We are also working with them. Uh, we don't think they can be a security threat. We can handle them. We have handled security threats, uh, bigger ones than these ones. Right. Uh, more broadly, uh, what message does the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan send to terrorists? According to many, it is a boon for terrorists, including in Africa, because they see the world's most powerful country withdrawing and leaving the country uh, to a group that's often been qualified as a terrorist group. There has been a mistake of trying to fight other people's wars. Uh, this is a mistake. People, the country should not fight other people's wars. If people want to fight, they should fight themselves. Uh, because this external interference distorts the internal picture. Here we fought, we fought here, we have fought many wars, but we fight by ourselves. We don't, want, we don't invite anybody else to fight for us. Let's take, for example, Somalia. Uh, your troops have been involved for years in Somalia. The situation is going from bad uh, to worse. Al-Shabaab has been active there. Do you think that because of the chaos in Somalia, uh, things might turn uh, for the worst in that country? To take an example. The issue of Somalia is, is uh, where the internal forces don't come up to show the, their responsibility. Uh, if they did, the situation would be uh, would have been solved long ago. Right. We, we cannot have grafted situations. We must have organically developed situations. The, the, the body must be able to defend itself. Because if the body cannot defend itself, that means you, you are suffering from uh, political AIDS. Uh, like, like AIDS, when, when the defense system of the body cannot defend itself, if this situation doesn't improve, the one you're describing, would you consider pulling your troops out of Somalia because you say it's not worth it? Of course, if, if the internal forces don't come up, uh, because you see external support must... Uh, first of all, I don't believe in external military presence. I don't, I don't. But where it, it must happen, it must be for very limited time. But you've been there since... 2014, if I'm yes, not mistaken. Because of, of, after we wanted to withdraw, we wanted to withdraw, but people pre prevailed on us. But you might do it now. We, 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 can, we have to discuss with the African Union, but for us, we think people should defend themselves. Turning to another uh, potential terrorist hotspot, Mozambique. We've seen a jihadist group take control of an area of an oil-rich region. 
We're seeing Sadek considering sending troops. Rwanda has already sent uh, troops. Are you concerned that this could become the biggest terrorist threat in southern and eastern Africa? And would you consider sending Ugandan troops over there? Yes, in the case of uh, Eastern, because the problem of Mozambique is linked to the problem of Eastern Congo. Those terrorists who eventually showed up in Mozambique have been here in Eastern Congo for the last 20 years. They have been maintained here in Eastern Congo. So the, the issue of Eastern Congo should be handled together with the issue of, of, of Northern Mozambique uh, and would contribute. We can contribute any time. But are you ready to send Ugandan forces on the ground in Mozambique like Rwanda has done? We would want to start with Congo first because the, 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 it's not, it will not solve the problem of Mozambique if you don't deal with the issue okay. of Congo. So let's turn to Congo because it was my next question. Obviously, mm. uh, you, others, the U.S., for instance, has warned about the threat of the so-called Allied Democratic Forces, ADF, in eastern Congo. You recently said that you were inching closer to sending your troops in eastern DRC to deal with the issue. Can you tell us more exactly what you're planning to do? We have always been ready, uh, if the Congo government uh, uh, agrees, to, to help in that problem. So, have they asked you to come we, in? We, and we are talking with them. We are talking with them. But are we nearing a decision? about that? That is for the Congo government to announce, but we, we are discussing with them. Right. Uh, I want to get to uh, the relationship with uh, your neighbor Rwanda. Uh, the border crossing has been closed for two years now. Is there any hope that it will reopen any time soon? You go and ask the, 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 the one who closes the border. I'm not the one who closes the border. But are there discussions to settle this issue? We had discussions long ago with the mediation of Angola some years ago. It hasn't worked. I have not seen the border being opened. The president, Paul Kagame, uh, told me in a recent interview and told others that he sees you as a bit of a bully, the master of the region, and that Rwanda cannot accept this and that this might explain the tensions between the two of you. Well, a, a bully how? A bully how? By doing what? You disagree with him? I, I don't agree with it. You should, you should uh, tell you how we are, we are bullies. Why has the relation soared between the two of you? You were very close for years. Do you have an explanation for that? I don't want to go into that because Mr. Kagame is not here. You are not a court, so I'm not going to to justify my, my position towards you against Mr. Kagame. One thing that was reported in the press, and uh, your country is not the only one, is that uh, Rwanda uh, spied using uh, the Israeli uh, monitoring mechanism Pegasus on very senior Ugandan official, you're then prime minister, you're then foreign minister. Uh, what is your reaction to uh, those very serious allegations? I, I didn't follow it up. I, I saw about it, but I didn't follow it up seriously. But are you concerned about Rwandan spying on the top echelons of your government? Well, it's, it's a waste of time. Spying to do what? Know your secrets, I don't know. But if I want secrets, uh, I will, you will not know. <laughs> because the secrets are in my head. They, they are not uh, in, on microphone. I want to get to the situation here. Uh, the authorities have announced that they would halt the activities of 54 civil society groups, including non-governmental organization for essentially improper filings. International groups like Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International are saying uh, that this is a way to stifle dissent in this country. Is this what's happening, Mr. President? The, the problem with these groups, they don't seem to understand the importance of sovereignty and they should not interfere in our internal politics because our, politi our, 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 our politics is sovereign. We are sovereign people. Yeah. We should make our own mistakes or, 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 or no mistakes. So we, we, we don't want uh, to, to groups uh, which are sponsored groups by actually foreign governments. 
they defend human rights, don't they? I mean, what's wrong with that? What human rights? The, who knows more about human rights than myself? I fought for 60 years for human rights. So how can they be having a program which is hidden from me? Speaking of mistakes, you just mentioned mistakes. Uh, I noticed that a few weeks ago you gave a televised address in which uh, you said that sec some security forces were, I quote you, lazy and undisciplined uh, in the way they handle uh, prisoners. Uh, and you, you said that, you know, uh, there is a problem essentially of mistreatment, torture, let's call it this way. Why did you feel you needed to address this issue? I noticed that some of the young new people who, who joined the security forces uh, seem not have, because of the foreign training they get, they get some training by groups from, I don't know where, from outside. They don't uh, uh, absorb our culture, our culture of, of the resistance movement which was pro-people. So it was, it was, I was explain, educating them, educating them, but also educating the public about the do's and the don'ts of... Uh, right, but... B because violence is like, uh, is like surgery. A surgeon, a surgeon uses a knife, mm. but at the right place and in the right way. Right. Uh, so, so you can't use violence and, and force indiscriminately, then you become a butcher. That's what I was explaining. But in the end, you're the senior commander. And so if there is torture, mistreatment by the security forces, you're the person responsible. Yeah, and and that's, why I was, uh, that's why I was educating them. That's why I was educating them, but also the public. What about prosecuting them also? Uh, they would be prosecuted. But, but you see, for us, we start by because we believe in the p policeman of the mind, not just the policeman of the body. It's, we always believe in educating, explaining. Even if you are to, to, to enforce, enforce to people who have some exposure about the right and the wrong. Uh, right. Uh, I want to go back to uh, what happened last November. Protests happened. People were killed, over 50. You promised a probe would be conducted and made public. The, the, it would be made public. Where, where, where is that probe? I, I will check. It was done. It was done, but I will check wh why they didn't uh, publicize it. S certainly it was done. That because they, an internal probe of the security was, forces it, it showed was. that most of people were killed by stray bullets. And so this contradicts the narrative that was given uh, by the government at the time. The, the, I, I, I don't have the details, but we, we, it's good it should be published. Right. Uh, and will people be prosecuted for those killings? Of course, of course, they will be. They because will no be. one has until now. No, they, 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 they will be. Mm. Uh, those uh, protesters, uh, you described them at the time as Western agents. Would you still say the same today? Yes, they, they were definitely being uh, uh, the, the political actors who are misusing those young people were definitely uh, agents of foreign interests. Would you say that your main challenger at the time, Bobby Wine, is a foreign agent? Well, originally they started off as an internal group because of our own internal right. issues. But then they, they get uh, uh, recruited by external actors, and then uh, that's how his movement failed. That's why he was defeated. Well, he claims that he lost because you cracked down on him on his movement. No, that's... he was defeated. You must have had something called defeat. He was defeated in spite of cheating, in spite of what... Were you afraid of his challenge to your rule? Not at all, because... Oh, well, we're not afraid at all, because we know wh where the issues are and how to handle them. What about dialogue with him? Is this something... We are always, we are always di dialoguing with, with those groups, including Bobby Wine, if he wants. Have you offered him to do so? We have, we have invited them to what we call the iPod, inter-party group. Right. Yeah. You're hoping 
He will respond favorably. Others, others have come. I didn't see Bobby Wine, but all the others came. Uh, I want to get back to, uh, just to finish on the situation here uh, about uh, some are saying that you're growing your oldest son, who is now the number three of the army, to succeed you. What is your response to those allegations? They are not, they are not serious. They, they, uh, why should I groom my son? The people of Uganda are there. They will select whom they want. Mr. President, just as a last question, you've been in power for 35 years. Um, obviously, some people are wondering if you want to be president for life or if you might decide one day, I've had enough, I believe I've done enough, and I want to leave the stage. You see, this is not a theater. This is not a theater for acting, uh, scene one, scene two. This is a struggle for destiny of the people of, of, of Uganda, of Africa. So we have reasons why we, 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 we had to fight and why we had to be in, in, in the politics. And it's those reasons that determine what we do. Do we need all the cadres or, or, or the actors or can some retire and others come up? That is what uh, determines, not, not that I, I, I want to be in government. I don't need, I don't need to be in government. Mr. President, I want to thank you very much uh, for hosting us here at State House in Entebbe. And I want to thank you very much for watching this exclusive interview here on France 24.